for you. We've also got a guest on the show tonight who's a very old and dear friend, even though I haven't seen him or talked to him in a long time. But I think when we were together, we spent such a compressed amount of time and space, you know, like literally 24 hours a day, and out of those 24 hours, not being more than like four feet apart, um, living on tour buses and hotel rooms and eating together and playing music together. Anyways, I'm talking about Tavis Stanley. He's a wonderful cat. Um, he's been down in Las Vegas, and uh, I caught up with him this week, and we had a great chat, and you're going to hear all about it. In the meantime, we're going to play you some tunes. Children waiting for the day they feel good. Happy birthday, happy birthday. They'd feel the way that every child should Sit and listen, sit and listen Went to school and I was very nervous No one knew me, no one knew me Ladies and gentlemen, tonight on the show, I, um, it's so weird. I haven't, I don't think we've had a conversation in probably 16 years, aside from like a little bit of Facebook interaction. Yeah. From there. I, I think so. A, came to a Thornley show down in Kingston after I'd left the band. And I think uh, Kale was down there with you. I think that was the last time I saw you, man. It's been so fucking long. I remember that. Yeah. Just hanging out with you and Kale uh, in the winter. It might have been like 2007. I don't know. Something like something that. Like that. Yeah. Cool. Um, I, I, it was a great night. It was it was really good to see you and stuff. But it, it also yeah. just kind of hit me like how fucking long ago that was. Um, and it was 19 years that we like did the big tours and stuff. I think 2004 was kind of we had a lot of action that year, and it's a long time ago. We 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 sure did, and we spent we spent enough time together. You know, more time than most people spend together in a lifetime in those short couple years. Um, I'll just I'll just sort of bring people into the perspective of how I met you, and then um, you can. Uh, sorry, somebody keeps messaging me. You can um, you can pick it up from there and fill me in on, on where you've been. Um, I was with Thornley. Uh, we had done the record. Uh, it was me and and Ian and Seku. Uh, the record was getting finished, and we got the call to go do the photo shoot. And we went down to the photo shoot somewhere downtown Toronto, some office building, and you were there. And I'm like, who's the kid over there? And, and he is like, oh, that's our new guitar player. I'm like, hey, what's up? cool. And, uh, and you popped up and you looked like you were about 12. Um, okay. You were I was 14, buddy. Okay. 14, yeah. Uh, I got, I've got photos to prove it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, you came into my life, and, and from there on, we ended up spending almost every day together for a couple of years and, and putting a lot of miles under our belts. Um, and after the Thornley thing, uh, you, stayed with, uh, you, you stayed with Ian for a while. Um, I'm not sure if you were with him. I think when he went back to Big Wreck, it was Brian again, maybe, but either way. Um, last I had heard, you know, was like uh, at, at that point in time, was was uh, somebody saying, oh, Tapas has gone down to Las Vegas and he's a professional poker player. And I went, what? <laughs> That's my fallback plan, you know? If music sure. doesn't work. I always just go play poker. But um, no, I wish. I, I have been here for a few years, but doing, doing music, yeah, as a main thing. <laughs> yeah. So what's uh, w what brought you down there and how did you get down there? Well, You're before I got here, I guess. American, right? It's like 20, 20 years to cover, but I mean, I started... Um, where was I? I was in LA for a bit. I lived in Iowa for a bit. Uh, don't ask about that one. 
I moved back to BC for a bit. I kind of like for about six or seven years after I left Toronto, I think I left Toronto in 2009. And then, you know, as I joined Art of Dying, went and made a record in LA. So that was kind of the beginning of being in LA a lot and doing that. Um, but yeah, and then I settled here in Vegas in 2015, uh, finally, and been here ever since. So it's just been all over the place playing in, in all kinds of bands and stuff. It is Art of Dying. Uh, I know that that was a big thing for a while. There was lots of push on it. And then um, in recent years, I've just kind of seen it disappear off the map a little bit. Is it still together or are you not with them anymore? Or? Yeah. Well, what we do now is, yeah, we're still a band, but we haven't toured in like five years. Right. Uh, we kind of got out of the, you know, did the major label thing. We're on two labels, we did, signed to Warner and did the whole thing for a bit. You know, you know, the, the thing where you never really make money and then they drop you after a few years. So we did that a couple of times, right? And, and now we just make music and put it out completely independently on Spotify, just work on our, our Apple Music and Spotify. And I do some producing and we just put it out. So we just don't want to tour really too much unless the right opportunity was there. But we're just making music, uh, making it more of a business and just enjoying doing that and staying home more yeah that's pretty incredible and it's, it's it's pretty wise in these times too i mean we you know we had covid that, that shut everything down and and now the price of gas and travel i mean hotels are you know you, you can't find an, a 60 or 80 yeah, hotel, I know. you know it's it's everything is way expensive and um yeah i i <laughs> even my friends who are still sort of touring they're like we can't make a fucking penny like it's and these are big bands so like you know we're, we're losing money all the time it's really yeah. hard it was bad before like you know covid and inflation now it's just yeah like hotels are up foods up and you know the fuel there's all these in like california you can't drive certain vehicles that are under a certain model now they've just passed these laws so like if you have a tour you swing through california you've got to stop rent another car and drive in there in a newer car like with less emissions it's like oh it's incredible yeah yeah, I that's <laughs> that stuff is fucking crazy. We skip California from the bands I play. We just like California, skip. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I guess there's a lot of music there. You know, uh, there's a lot of choices. So you you, you kind there's of lots going. Well, it's too bad. Yeah, yeah that's weird. Yeah, I, touring in the states. I mean, touring everywhere is, is expensive. Touring in the states is easier because everything is close and there's a bigger population. But uh, it still ain't easy out there. It's going to take some time yeah what's the uh the new band that i've been seeing you with recently well i've been playing with a band here uh from vegas called adelita's way for the last four years and those are like old friends I met, I met them with art of dying back in like 2011 we did a bunch of tours um they were on like virgin records we did you know a bunch of crossing paths on the road old friends and then when i came here i just joined the band sort of you know called them up one day and the, there was an opening and so i jumped in with them for the last little bit and yeah, we just tour mainly the States and a little bit in Europe, but it's that's where I've really seen it. Like the last few years, I've just seen it with them just get harder and harder and have the you know, the cost go up and the you know the, everything else go down. And uh, pe people showing up at shows has gone down too. Like people that uh, would drive 100 miles, right, to come into town just won't now, right, because it's, oh, it's 100 miles. It's just too much. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that, but you're right, yeah. Um, people drive yeah. You know, half a tank of gas for an evening out is... They say it all the time, like, oh, I really want to come. You get these messages, sorry, I'm not coming. It's just too far now, and, you know, gas is this much, and it's 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 everywhere. Well, luckily, there is, um, you know, the internet and the tools that the record companies used to have are all available to us now. Like you say, you're working your Spotify and your Apple Music, and you're producing your own stuff and putting it out. Um that seems to be a, a model that so many people are going to um bands that have been in labels and bands that have been indie for a long time um it, it, it you know it, it just seems to be the way to do things um that's like the only way now you know it's just if you don't yeah. control i think most record deals would take almost all your streaming like that's what they go for right away so yeah you know they make so much for doing nothing right now for all the old catalog they have in the streaming world is so big they just it just pours in I know. Streaming gets bigger all the time, yeah. Yeah, every now and again, I look at some of the Watchmen numbers and stuff, and I'm like, doesn't that turn into something at some point? <laughs> you know, when, when does that money hit uh, hit the artists? It's uh, it, it's interesting to see, but you're right. Yeah, there's a uh, they have a major new cash cow with this um, with this thing, which is you know <coughs> good for them. And don't get in checks, Watchmen checks, right for, for Spotify. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I just don't you know, I never really know. I'm gonna be able to the numbers seem so high and then the checks come and it's just like, you know, <laughs> well, like whoever owns it, right? Like the, the beauty of what we're doing now is so like we write the song, so we have the publishing, but then we own the master. So that's the, that's the big chunk, right? 80% of all the, the money from streaming now goes to the owner yeah. of the master. 
and they give like 20 percent to the writer so it's like it's so lopsided that's why hey labels hey we own everything so we we've set it up that we own 80 percent of the money that's there that's available right yeah, the master ownership is a pretty huge one, and it is amazing how that's split. Um, I didn't know that that was actually the number, but yeah, that's very interesting. It's close to, it might be worse than that, actually. It might be like 90, 10, but it's, yeah, it's really quite alarming. It's the, the writer gets like a crumb. And then, you, of course, there's five writers, so five writers will, will split a crumb. You know? And those writers have managers working for them. Yeah, and then you got taxes, managers, uh, everything. You get, you get nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, you know, I, 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 I'm not unaware of, of the luck that I had playing music when I did in the late 80s, early late 80s through the mid 2000s, um, a time when the record companies were still paying for things and artists could make money. Um, and, it, you know, it, it still comes through. And I'm, I, I'm no I'm no fool to, to not know that I'm very, uh, very lucky to have that. Uh, you know, I know I joke about the industry a lot, but um, yeah, the industry has always had a weird, um, you know, it's, it's always been a big high interest bank. But at the same time, who else is going to put your billboards up? You know, I mean, if if you want to be famous, you need a lot of <clears throat> you need a lot of a lot of money, and you know, to convince a record company that you're yeah. that that's a big thing. You know, uh, you can't really dismiss the record companies. Um, I try not to get on the record company hating too much because you know, I know so many bands that have been indie for years, but had they been had a contract been put in front of them, most of them would have taken it. You know, they they're not like they're gonna. Um, sure. I think most people still would yeah it's funny that the new business model the way i see it how we did it was just go through the labels get a fan base get dropped and now you have your own spotify but yet with like we're like grandfathered into that like we'll never be below a certain point right of just the, the way the algorithm is working whatever it is yeah. so without the labels to build a fan base takes so long it's, it's so hard like i don't know how you, you do it still a lot, a lot of that old radio play really helped and translated but yeah if you can get it going that's what you want to do it's it's so hard to get it going without major promotion on still spending the money yeah. it is yeah you, you either need a massive amount of people who are interested or a small amount of people who are fucking fanatical you know um yeah. or both yeah. or both is is, is is an ideal um so you went down to your you're in a, you're in uh vegas now um what, what what do you do all the time in vegas I see. I well, see a thing called Zoe Bowie. Are you are you in that? I do lots of stuff. That's that's a band I play in town. I'm playing tonight actually. It's like a cover band, party, fun band. We play downtown a lot, like outside on the stages they have out in Fremont. Yep. And you know, around do corporate stuff as well. Um, it's a really fun band. It's been around forever. The the band's been in town for like 20 years. I I jumped in there just a few years ago, just you know, just from being in town. And sure. I do a few other things around town too. You know, just play play. The cover scene's great here. There's so many bands and so many venues and so many shows. There's just lots going on. You can really work here. So, well, a schooled musician who also had, you know, the the rock star lifestyle of touring and all that stuff. Um, you know, you must be a, a a bit of a gem down there. You know, or is it filled with people like you? I hope so. There's a, there's a few people that look like me, but I don't know if there's good. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. There's a lot of talent. Like there's a lot of talent here, but yeah, for sure. I mean, you get in there and, and it's like people are always networking here and it's a, people are always subbing out and you get calls. And everything. That's very cool. It's probably a really good town to, to be in because of all the theater work, right? Do you do, yeah, any, that, do, you do any pit work where you're not I actually on stage? Like that, but I mean, those, those things are there. I, I, that's a whole other, other world I haven't even been in, involved in yet, right? But big shows, you know, like and there's Blue Man Group shows and there's that. But just aside from that, there's just so many bands and, and venues and there's always entertainment and I do like a we do like a big band show with Zoe Boy. Sometimes we play with horns, depending on where it is. So he'll bring in horn sections, like lots of fun things like that. Oh, that's neat. Um, and you do you find your schooling helps? Like in a situation like where you're in a place like Vegas, like there's a lot of probably uh, musical directors who you work with, and and they just kind of give you the stuff and expect you to be able to do it. Like, do you think? Yeah, yeah. yeah that, for sure. A lot of rockers are out there, played for years, and did all the touring, but they couldn't actually survive in that type of place because they don't know how to read and they don't know the theory behind it all. You have that. Yeah, you. you find that, that a big bonus. Pretty quickly, yeah, it definitely helps because I can just, you know, sometimes it's like sink or swim, and I'm always, always able to swim. You know, I can read a chart and keep up. So yeah, for sure, that's, that that helps a ton. Like, and I do that. I have to read some pretty, some pretty hardcore ones. I have to read, but I'll practice them, of course. But you know, yeah. some pretty wild chords, you know, that are like about five letters long that kind of stuff it's fun it's fun though definitely there's a lot of variety i do so that's very cool it's neat that you're um 
do you think you're uh, being an educated musician, like, you know, being trained in music, you know, the craft, and then being on the road and having the experience you do and now being able to apply that, and I know you do some teaching too, do you find with your students that's a big thing? Like, you're, you're not just kind of like, I'm going to show you the new Green Day chords, you know, but like, you, do you try and instill yeah. some of the theory as a good, a good thing to have with them? I do for sure. And I have a lot of like advanced students where we dive straight into like real like modes and harmony and I'll teach ear training. So, I, so it's a lot of stuff for me. That's fun. I'll, I'll go off on tangents and stuff like that's it's weird. Like after about 10 years, I just sort of have a style of teaching. So I'll be able to teach the, the jazzy nerdy theory and I get pretty excited about it. still. so it's fun and people like it. So I do all I mean, all kinds of yeah, everything from from Green Day to like advanced harmony. Yeah, so that's very cool, man. Um, how old are you now, Tavis? 43. 43. That's what I thought. Um, you, w w did you ever th think when you were a kid and you were learning how to play guitar that this is where you'd end off uh, sort of in your pre-midlife? No, really. No, I, I find myself every couple of years thinking that. Did I ever think I'd be here? No, not really. But where did you think you'd be? I don't know. So, <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely trippy. Like being in Vegas sometimes, like, yeah, it's, it's definitely a great place to be for music. <laughs> You know, I have a son now who's two years old. He's amazing. And, you know, it's great weather here. It's always sunny. It's, it's always something going on here. It's, it's an exciting place to live, and it's a lot of fun. And sometimes you go, yeah, like, wow, living in Vegas is cool. Like, why not? Living in Vegas, place. playing music, got a son. What's your son's name? My name's Hala. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, Halen is, uh, how old did you say? He's two. He just turned two. So Just turned two. Wow. How's life as a dad? That must be new. It, it's great. Oh, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's new. It's it's fun. So I mean, I I have him all the time, and uh, we we do a lot of things. And he likes to hang out here when I record, and he'll sort of just bang on the guitars while I'm sitting here and just amuse himself, and come over and he wants to sit on my lap. So he's always in here when I'm doing music. He'll be uh, he'll be playing and singing hopefully soon enough for drumming. Who knows? Very whatever good. he wants to do. <laughs> and and does he love you as much as both of my girls did when they were young? Oh, that's that's tough. I'm sure he does. Um, but yeah, your girls, how are they? Caitlin and Cassidy. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin and Cassidy are, you, you, well, of course you wouldn't recognize them. They're, they're almost, well, 23 and 21 now. Yeah, I see the photos sometimes on Facebook and I'm like, wow. Like, yeah, they're all grown up, you know, like. Grown up, they're out in the world. They got boyfriends, they got jobs and careers and they're, they're, they're doing, I don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> I just remember staying at your house for Christmas, you know, one time and just opening presents and they're like five, so that's. Yeah, I, I, I was digging. I was digging around today, collecting a bunch of pictures to to insert into this later on, and nice. um, I found a bunch of pictures of you and the girls on the tour bus. But then I found the, the pictures of that Christmas when you and Shane were here, and yeah. um, that was back. That was back in the Thornley days. We we were so busy that you guys, you know, nobody really got breaks. And if you didn't live in Toronto, you know, because Christmas break would be you know a show on the twenty third and then starting up again on the twenty seventh. Um, so yeah. you guys didn't Wait. go. Home. Yeah, we just we never stopped, right? I mean, we it's two days off, I think. Yeah, the Thornley touring was was um, was some of the busiest touring. Um, just the way we traveled too, you know, like when we were in the states, waking up at four a.m. to go get a flight for a noon radio show, and then another flight to another show that night, and like we used this, to do that twice twice a week for like three months straight. We just yeah, it was, it was so hard. It was just it was nonstop. But um, I, I found a bunch of pictures of you and the girl, and then and then that Christmas time, because Shane was living in New Brunswick, and your parents were all out in Alberta, right? No, BC. Uh, BC, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you and Shane came up here for Christmas, and um, yeah, I, I got some great photos from that. Do you ever see Shane or speak with him? I haven't, outside of you know just some social media here and there over the years. But yeah, he looks good. Yeah, he looks, <laughs> he looks exactly the same. Everyone looks good. He does. Um, how about the rest of the gang? You ever see or hear from anybody? Uh, I talked to Ian a few times over the years. Last time I, I called him when Brian passed a couple years ago, and I called him then, of course, and yeah, I text here and there. But um, yeah, not as much as I'd like to, but I, I never even get up to Canada. Like, I'm never there. I'm sort of just, I'm more like down here. I've just, I've lost touch with a few people in Toronto, but um, man, I'm due for a visit up there. I miss everybody. For sure. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a, there's a, Big amount to be. You, you did the Orbit Room for a while after too, didn't you? Were you in on that? Yeah, we did that for like five years. That was kind of like the mid two thousands, like like legacy party scene. There, we, we kind of started that. Yeah, yeah, because it's still sort of going on. Who was in the band with you then? That was you and so it was me and Eric, 
uh, oh. right from Thornley, and then K- Kale was there a lot of the time. We had three or four bass players, um, Brady and actually Dave McMillan was played in the band all the time um, before he was in Big Rec, and then Chris Cadell, of course, who's in Big Rec again. So it was basically Big Rec and Thornley <laughs> was was the band, and then Ian was there every night too, and on stage every night with us too. So. Yes, a rock and roll band from Canada making their first appearance on The Tonight Show. Their debut album right here will be released uh, Tuesday. It's called Come Again. Please welcome Thornley. The Thornley days. What's your What's your memory of the blur? I don't know. It was a bit of a blur, right? That I mean, that year two thousand four was. I remember walking around with you everywhere and going out for lunch and shopping, and then just you know playing the shows. Like I said, flying out all the time, just kind of always doing something. We we're so busy back in those. Always something to do. Acoustic performances and this and then up early, like you said, it, it was really busy. I just remember having a ton of fun. I, I feel like it was a magical time when I think about it. I can sort of remember like smells and things like, oh, I remember that smell that day in that room or like, wherever we, I just little things like little patios we played on at radio stations. But yeah, every day was really special for me back then because I was like 24. I was just like, you know, my mind was blown like daily. So yeah, I mean, you, know. you, were, you were like even new to sort of, you know, sushi and stuff <laughs> yeah. in Toronto we'd be ordering stuff and you're like what are we ordering I don't even know what I'll never try had. what's that I'd never even had edamame before exactly um it it was an equally I mean even though I I was a couple of years older than you um yeah it was a it was it was a, you know because I'd come off of I don't know how many decades of, of Watchmen touring at that time uh, you know at, at least one in a bit um and I remember I did the last Watchmen show on New Year's Eve in Buffalo, and then the first Thornley show, I think, was the 3rd of January. Like, I took no break between bands. I just kept going. Yeah, that was before we were even called Thornley. I think we, we, we still didn't have a name at that point. But it was, a, um, it was a totally magical time. I mean, we were surrounded by such great people. Uh, we got to meet, I mean, some of the managers and agents we worked with and the A&R people in the States, you know, just brilliant people that had worked with all of our idols. We had so much respect for them. And we were also so young and stupid and eager and, yeah. and being like, remember, remember you know, seeing like, all the Storm Thorgerson pictures in New York that day? We got to like pick them all. And like, he Storm did a bunch of things. There's like 12 of them. I, yeah, I remember seeing that, like picking the album covers. Yeah, you're right. And this guy who'd done like, you know, all of our favorite album covers. Who's that? You know? Oh, Pink Floyd, yeah. I thought it was pretty rad. <laughs> and the amount of, the massive amount of talent that we had, you know, the um, the four of us as a group was was pretty astounding. I, I, I remember being, you know, coming off stage sometimes just almost wanting to collapse. Like it had, like keeping up with everybody <laughs> took everything out of me. Uh, every night, you know, it was just like, and, and then when we started doing those shows in the States with Seven Dust and all those really heavy bands, heavy, high energy bands, it just sort of, it got us to get that going too. It was, yeah, it was such an aggressive ball of fun, you know? I know. I remember seeing Seven Dust for the first time on one of those first tours and going, holy crap, that's like, that's what we got to do. We got to be like them. They're yeah. running all over the place. So I remember the next the next day I asked like me to to put picks all over my guitar so I could walk out and I could flick them out all over the place. I had my guitar plastered and picks just like second dust. Like, this is what we gotta do. This is the show. <laughs> okay. Gotta spin around. <laughs> Good job. Oh uh, <laughs> they, they blew me away the first time. Yeah, I mean Seven Dust really, really turned my head the first time I saw them. It was Yeah, me too. I, 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 I think it was, a show, it was a show that we did. He loved it. Yeah. I told him eight years later, I, I met LJ and told him that reminded me, he's like, wow, that's, that's awesome. You know, it's like, he said, you guys, that was the inspiration. That's how yeah, you do it. It was huge. 
The other band that we spent a lot of time back with uh, then who were also, their game went from, you know, a great fucking band to an amazing band was uh, Three Days Grace. I used to sit and watch yeah. that in, in almost nights, you know, just, they had it down. I had Kale side there with Barry, right? We'd sit there and smoke cigarettes yeah. with Kale. Yeah. I'd pass the guitar off to Barry sometimes. But, yeah. You know. <laughs> it was a... Uh, you know, looking back, it was such a fun time, you know, and the side stage was always, you know, when we did a bunch of those multi-band tours, I mean, you'd be standing on the side of the stage, sitting down, like you say, having a smoke and a beer, watching an amazing band and like, you're standing with 15 people that are all people that you kind of idolize a little bit, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it was special. yeah, three days grace, uh, funny, you just mentioned that I was just thinking I was going to tell you, we just were talking about kale and everything, but the next, the band I'm going on, on tour within two weeks in San Antonio, actually. Oh, so I'm practicing for that right now, so I'm going to go out with Adam and Kale and Cody is in the band now too, who's the Art of Dying drummer. So it's just Art of Dying with with, with Adam now, uh, pretty much um, filling in for Mike for this tour. So it'll be pretty fun. That's very cool. Are you guys going to come up to Canada? Not on this run, but I'm just doing this run right now, and we'll just go from there. But the the band is planning a whole, you know, single and release and more stuff. So see see what happens. But. Well, if you make it up this way and you come to Peterborough, because Kale's from Peterborough, so or Kale and uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, they live there. They just played here months ago. But. If you come up this way, you got a place to stay, and I'm sure the girls would get a real kick out of seeing you. Oh cool. no, yeah, I have to it'd be great to see you. I have to hang out. I'm sure eventually we'll see what happens. I might do some more shows in the future, but yeah, right now we're doing a big US tour with Skillet and Theory. Oh, nice. Oh, those guys. Wow, so you're still rocking out and having a ball, eh? Yeah. Yeah, keep it busy. Yeah, it's good. That's yeah. pretty incredible. What's your um what's your favorite Thornley memory? Oh man. I don't know, maybe like Jay Leno Leno's a pretty good one. Like that whole trip was great. You know, like flying yeah. to LA, being told you're going on Jay Leno and you're like twenty four years old. Oh, this is cool. You get picked up like you're in a limo, you're going shopping. You know, you get some clothes, you get taken out to dinner. People are just buying you said, oh, this is great. I'm going on Jay Leno tomorrow. So, the whole thing with that again that we talk about magical that was just like i'm sure you felt it too that was cool right like going to do i felt trip. it totally cool and and that was the day um that was the day that i got my uh my first endorsed pv base it was at the hotel when we showed oh, up that's right. custom PV. five string PV. block yeah that's I right played on, i played it on the uh, tonight show that night started, and, yeah started. That couple days was wild yeah yeah and oh, yeah, so i'll get the pvs going there that was great yeah what was, what was the store we went to was it Nikki Six, Nikki Six's clothing store we went to? And yeah, we were, I think, yeah, something like that. It's kind of like all the clothes is free for you guys. And we're like, holy fuck. And we, we, really? we stocked up. <laughs> I don't think I took enough. I think I was pretty modest. I could use more. <laughs> I don't know. No, we got some good stuff. That was fun. I, I remember getting back to La Bus because Ian hadn't been with us for some reason. And uh, I remember Ian poaching a bunch of the shirts that, uh, that I had taken because we were the same size. Your, your blue shirt. Blue blue one, exactly, and I had the green, the green one. He had the blue one. And it was like every now and again he yeah. you know, couldn't wear them at the same time. Lots of conversations about that. Um, and what's your uh, what's your weirdest Thornley memory? Oh man, weird one. Huh? It depends what you think weird is, though. What well, kind of weird? <laughs> Probably a bunch I can never tell. Obviously, um, I don't know. You know what? I remember the first. The first tour, like with Nickelback across Canada, that was pretty cool because we were going out with Chad every night. Like that was when I was fresh into the band, and all of a sudden you're out on tour, you know, with Chad Kruger going all over town, going VIP, going to strip clubs or wherever we would go, and just like that was an eye opener too. It's like okay, you know, I'm part of the entourage. That was the first tour at a winter. I remember walking around like Regina or wherever every night was somewhere else. But. I remember that there was an orbit around Chad. You know, we'd walk into a room, there'd be like a hundred people in a bar and, you know, five of us would walk into a room and we'd all go up to the bar together and, it, and the whole hundred people would kind of circle around us, but slowly you'd get weeded off of Chad. And before you knew it, there'd be four of us standing like 10 feet away, looking at Chad, just surrounded by people. Yeah. You get, you get pushed out a little bit. Hey, yeah. 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 Bit by bit. And before you know it, everybody who's with Chad is away from him, you know, <laughs> I yeah. love. Them. I got nothing but good things to say about Nickelback too. You know, they were so good to us. Every every show was oh, yeah. fantastic. Uh, they treated us just like it was amazing. Yeah, I, I I can never say anything bad about them. Yeah, that was fun. Well, listen, Tavis, we're coming down to the last few minutes here. Um, thanks so much for sitting in and, and and chatting with the band. So, 
where where are chatting about the band where um do you have a website now or like what's what are you pushing and promoting is it adelita's way is it uh, or is it all of it yeah it's all of it i mean art of dying music.com that's you know you can find uh, all that there but you know social media just facebook and like so we put out music uh, with art of dying every like couple months i just keep pumping songs out so you'll just look for that and I'm easy to find if you want to get a hold of me for for Skype guitar lessons or for producing or anything. Tweet me or Facebook me. Excellent. Excellent. Tavis, man, this has been really good. I'm sorry it's taken so long. Um, your your name comes up a lot around the house still. Oh, good. Glad to hear. Um, I, I, I'm, I can actually, you know, I, I, I do miss you. I, I, I wish I saw you more. I, I don't see much of anybody these days. Um, me too. What's that? That I miss you too. Yeah, thanks. I mean, yeah, no, I, I, I hope that uh, at some point we get to see each other. But um, drop me a line. Keep in touch in the meantime, and I'd like to stay better in touch with you. Sure, man. Yeah, absolutely. It's been great chatting. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having me. It's been really nice. Yeah, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that was Tavis Stanley, um, rock god, uh, guitar player extraordinaire, producer, singer, songwriter. He's everything. Tavis, thanks for taking the time to come on the show, man. We really appreciate it, and all the best with everything you got going on. Okay. My pleasure, brother. Thank you. Hey, man. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, Steve. Steve asked to follow. I saw you guys like 10 to 15 times when you were throwing me. Best memory was a ra- road trip. Rolling Rock Town Fair. Yeah. La Trobe. That's, that's right. Oh, God. Okay. I remember the Rochester, New York with Finger 11. Uh, my cousin came down to that show, too. Um, man, those were, <laughs> those were some hot, sweaty days. I tell you. I mean, we used to... You know, we wore a lot of jeans and leather and, and, and uh, wristbands and stuff. It was all the big rage. You know, these big leather wristbands that were all sort of... You'd get off stage and you could wring these things out. Like every piece of clothes, would, like you, you'd, you'd take it off and it would be dripping. You know, we're doing four o'clock in the afternoon sets on these festival circuits down in the States and just day after day and you're on the bus and your clothes is getting stinkier and you're waiting for the next time there's a laundromat and... Oh man, what a what a mess! Like I say, a big messy ball of fun it was. Uh, anyways, I want to thank Tavis Stanley for coming on the show, and um, Tavis, uh, like like I said, all the best. Sun goes down over Wichita Falls. I've seen the best, and I've seen them all that days, and nothing more beautiful to see. You wring your hair, you drape your clothes Sunlight's your silhouette shape Exposed as clear You're bringing out the best in me Why you wanna waste your time with me? Why you wanna waste your time with me? Morning breaks, I haven't slept all night The sunlight warms to your skin's delight I'm dying just to sit here and watch you breathe Pressed to your chest lies a mother's joy he Dreams, little dreams of a little boy This feels like a luck I can't believe Why you wanna waste your time with me? Why you wanna waste your time with me? It's been ten years or maybe twelve We've had some times We felt like hell but you held your ground You stayed strong and true for me And the good times they far outweigh the bad And the happiness outweighs the sad There's just one question here and my friends agree Why you wanna waste your time with me? Why you wanna waste your time with me? Now the years have passed, they've grown and gone All I can do is sing this song in a voice that cries